Hello everybody, Snow Frost Flame here, and I'm doing a tutorial on how to get the Ocarina of Time randomizer. Uh, but not just that. I'm do it's a tutorial on the 2.0 version, the 2.17.5 version, which I labeled the 3.0 version, and an emulator so that you can play it. This tutorial is going to go through everything you need to know so that you can play the randomizer. So, oh, without further ado, let's do this. First thing before we get going, uh, if you have any questions with uh, setup or gameplay, I highly advise going to the Ocarina of Time randomizer Discord. If you get stuck in the game, they can easily answer your question and help you out. Or if you have help, need help with uh, installation, uh, they're the go-to guys for this sort of thing. You can also go there just to chat and even uh, and do other stuff and whatnot. We're go first off. We're going to. S okay, thank you, John. First off, we're going to start with the 2.0 version. There is two ways of doing this: either with Python or the inst the installer. The installer is how I did it. It is very very simple. You just click the damn thing. All right, and then once the download's finished, uh, show in folder, and you just click that. I already have it installed, so there's literally no point in putting this in. All right, that, that is the easiest way of doing it. Now, the second way of doing it, uh, which is optional for the 2.0, but is mandatory for the 2.17.5 version, Python. Um, just download the latest version, which as of making this is 3.7. Once you download that, you'll get something similar to this. Um, go into like a uh, custom install and ensure that um, this, make sure that this is on, otherwise it's not gonna work. And as for the next page, it's really up to you. I le have it left by default. If you, if you want to do the Python method, and you, you got Python and whatnot, and you're ready to go, download the source code, the .zip version of it, and you just wait for it to go through. Okay, when it's ready, go take a look. Click, click, there's the GUI, but nothing happens. You just get a command prompt that opens and closes. The reason for this is because the file is zipped. You have to extract it with 7-zip or WinRAR and um, just extract wherever you want. Okay, once you've extracted it, I extracted it here so I could find it easier. Uh, you click in, then you go to the GUI, and then boom, opens up. That's how you do the Python method. Uh, I would personally recommend the installer, but you can't use an installer for the next thing we're going over, the 2.17 version. For that, it is pretty much the exact same method that you did for the 2.0 version, but you go here, click that, you download the zip, uh, you get the file, which should be somewhere down here, you extract it, and then once you get the extracted file, you go in, Go to the, to the GUI, and there you go. There's the 2.17.5 version. Now, all of this, we did all this work. It wasn't really that much work, but uh, all you get out of it are, is software. This software uh, isn't the game. This software just takes the game and randomizes it. Now... Uh, another thing I should mention, I should have mentioned this earlier, you're going to need a 1.0 version of Ocarina of Time. I'm not going to leave links to that one because, you know, the, uh, the shit's technically illegal and whatnot. But ROMs for Ocarina of Time or really any retro game, is, they aren't very hard to come by. Just quick Google search and you should find something. Um, anyways, going over the 2.0 version since uh, there are a lot of options with the 2.17 ver version. Uh, just a bit too much. But the 2.0 version, like, 
Uh, this is more like for the casual people. I would recommend starting here because there's not so many rules, not so many things to change. And then once you're comfortable with it, then move to the 2.17 version where it has more rule changers and it's a lot harder. Now, just set the rules how you normally, how you would like it. The Rainbow Bridge requirement, I always set it to having all the medallions. Um, I love setting the tunics to random because you never know what it will look like. I don't care too much for the low health, but we'll just do it anyways. Always when you make these randomizers, or yeah, these, uh, yeah, when you make your own randomizer thing, uh, always create a spoiler log. Uh, because when you get stuck and you have no idea where to go next, this will tell you not only the route you should be taking, like the best possible route for the quick ascending, it also tells you the location of all items, so if you're stuck and you just give up, take a look at that and should be good to go. Um, hit this, compress patched ROM, otherwise uh, you could deal, your game could crash and it gets kind of annoying. And more rules, just however you want it to be. Now. Uh, for here, the base ROM, just select wherever your 1.0 version of Ocarina of Time is. Here I have it in my ROMs folder. And choose how many you want to generate. We'll generate one for now. Generate the patch. And it's successful. Now you want to go into your files, figure, and go wherever you have this where you, to where you can find your thing. Anyways, just take your randomizer and uh, bring it over to your ROMs folder. All right, now that's taken care of. You have your randomized ROM, but now you need an emulator so that you can play it on. What you want to do here, go to RetroArch. This is the emulator I prefer. It is the Swiss Army knife of emulators. Most emulators, you know, are meant for like one game. Like there is a GameCube emulator, a PlayStation 1 emulator, an NES emulator. RetroArch is all of that in one, which is why I love it so much. Go, um, scroll down, use whatever version you're using. Like it goes all out with all this stuff. You can even get an Xbox version, which is not available apparently. But apparently you can do it on the GameCube. Uh, anyways, get the one you're using. Using I am using the 64-bit version, so you would just click download, and as you can see, that is a dot seven zip uh, file it's giving. You just use seven zip or WinRAR to extract it. Uh, that's going to take a fucking eternity. So let me just show you what it looks like. Okay, when you finish it, you should get this. You just click this, and this is the RetroArch setup wizard. You just go through, install it, and whatnot, and then you have RetroArch. Now, I'll go over RetroArch right here in a minute. Just click it. Um, it can go in windowed or full screen. I have to keep it in windowed mode when I'm recording because my recording software tends to freak out if I play any of my emulator games in full screen, and it'll only record the desktop or a black screen. So... RetroArch, there's a lot of customization options you can do over here, but uh, I'm not going to get too in-depth with it. I'm just going to show you the basics so you can play the damn game. Okay, now hold up just a minute. Uh, this is me from the future. Uh, going through editing this video, I realized I forgot to go over one important detail with uh, RetroArch. You need to have a... Uh, where is it? I believe it's under Input. Yes, you have to have a uh, menu toggle combination. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to access your uh, menu, like in case you need to readjust your controls. I have mine set to L1, R1, start, select, because when in God's name are you going to need to use that for a retro game? So make sure you have one of these. It can be something as simple as start, select, not... Oh. Well, not none. It has to be something. Uh, down L this. There's so many different ones. This is the one I prefer. But yeah, anyways, back to the video. First things first, you're going to need to load a core. 
And uh, these are all the cores I use. Uh, go into download core and you'll get the index of all the cores that it supports. For all, all of these cores you see are individual emulators. Lots and lots of emulators. We're going to need a Nintendo 64 emulator. This is the one that I use, but you can use this one if you want. It's really up to you. I don't really see a difference in the two, but this is the one I, I use. Once you do that and your, your core has been installed, uh, you need to go to load content, uh, your C drive or wherever, like just go wherever you have your uh, ROMs folder at. For me, I have mine all the way in my downloads because uh, that's the only folder I know by heart how to get to from here. Uh, Nintendo 64. Ocarina of Time. This is the one that we created in the recording. And there you go. Beautiful. Look at that purple link back there. Now, yeah. From here, just enjoy the game. Have fun with the randomizer. Now, I'd be lying if I said I figured this out all on my own. There are a couple of channels I have to uh, mention, because without their help, I would have no fucking idea as to what I'm doing. But yeah, uh, a spe special thanks to Shad Midnight. Uh, he did the original 2.0 tutorial with Python. Masterlink, who did the tutorial for the 2.17 version, and Very Sydney for the doing a tutorial on the ins uh, the installer. Without those three, I would have no idea as to what I'm doing. So yeah. Anyways, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you uh, learned something and have fun with the randomizer. So see you guys then. Goodbye.